<laughs> oh, we're back on the air. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, here's the number you've all been waiting for. Live from the Big E in downtown Essex, the fabulous and entertaining Old Time Radio Show. Here we go, folks. There is a Christmas dimension, a dimension of rest, beyond that which is known to man. A dimension of peace and relaxation, of calm, family harmony, where children naturally exude the warm obedience we have all come to know and love. A dimension where tears and stress are non-existent, and where children sleep throughout the night. A place where every gift is the perfect gift, and every child has a grateful heart. A place where things happen exactly as you plan, and nothing goes wrong. This, ladies and gentlemen, is not that dimension. It's Christmas Eve morning, and you've planned a relaxing drive with your two kids and darling wife. With an eight-hour drive ahead, you have planned early and set the alarm for seven o'clock. Ah, good morning, Peter! Did you just see a sleek ass belt layout? Uh, I think I did, honey. Sorry. Uh, honey, how are you on this fine early Christmas Eve morning? Morning? Early? Um, it's 11 o'clock! This is not looking good. No, 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 no. Come on, I set the alarm for 7 o'clock. Why does this always happen? Where on earth is the alarm clock? And we're, we're never gonna get to Mom's on time now. That's why we should have gone to my parents for Christmas. Oh, Christmas in the Bronx. That worked out really well last time, honey. Well, at least Christmas in the Bronx smells a lot better than your pig farm and family. Oh, come on, that pure, wonderful country smell. Frank springs out of bed only to land on the toys he graciously asked his children to pick up the night before. Oh, oh, uh, you've got to be kidding. Uh, oh, Cindy Sue, Gabby, you never clean up the toys. Statistically speaking, we clean up the toys 56% more of the time than we don't, which puts us in a favorable batch of completion. Hey, Daddy, me like bells. Ring, ring. Oh, Cindy Sue, there's my alarm clock, you sweet looting pirate of a child. Arr. Okay, guys, we have got to get ready quickly so we can get to Grandma's. Not Grandma's. Did she shave her beard yet? Because November is over. Can't we? That's awful. Funny, but awful. Hey, that's my mom you're talking about. All characters in this story are completely fictional and bear no resemblance to any real live family members. Okay. And remember, kids, we don't call it facial hair. We... we Call it character. Frank quickly reads them the riot act, expressing the need to be downstairs and ready to go in 30 minutes. All right, ready kids? Let's do this quick for Dad. We all know how crazy he gets. Ready, set? <laughs> Thanks for the support, honey. Go! go! In a frantic fury of flying toothbrushes and hair combs, the family finally begins to get ready. Where's my electrostatic analyzer and my thermocouple voltmeter? Grab your bags and your Volta whatever meter and, and let's go. Okay, roll call, Mom. Ready? Gabby? I was ready 32.3 seconds oh. ago. Cindy, Sue, Gabby, you both went to the bathroom? Yes, yes Mom. Mom. Honey, I can't even get Cindy Sue's zipper up. Oh, here, let me try it. Come on, zip, will you? Honey, grab her legs and pull! Woo! Oh, finally. You finally succeed in getting the zipper up, but you don't expect to get it off anytime soon. Oh, come on, guys, we have got to get going. After a long, arduous battle of snowsuits, boots, and luggage, the Duncan family finally settles into the van, ready for their journey ahead. Okay, does everybody have everything? Yes, yes Mom. Mom. This is Frank, with his children all bundled and snuggled in the van, his GPS set to grandmother's house, and his peaceful, calm, expectant wife dreaming about her soon-to-be-born baby boy. Frank has finally believed he's entered the Christmas dimension. Okay, so we're all ready. Yes, yes Dad. Dad. No more interruptions. Nope, let's do this. Okay, finally, here we go. Excuse me, excuse me, Dad. Oh, yes, honey. I have to go wee wee. Oh, come on, I just put your one piece snowsuit on with a broken zipper. Breathe, Frank. Breathe. Dad, the bulging vein on your head is indicating you are currently experiencing it. Not time. another word. After several dramatic, tear filled <laughs> moments, Frank finally composes himself. The family is ready to go. Okay, Gabby, set the GPS and let's go. Hey, Cindy Sue! Hi, Wally, it's the expected time of arrivals approximately eight hours. 
in 15 minutes! Cindy Sue, what did you do? I, I can't drive to that, man. The whole kilt thing just threw me off. Hey, what Scotch man? Sounds like Uncle Wadi. Hey, somebody please fix it. But I didn't do it. It hey, doesn't matter who did it, somebody just fix it. Cindy Sue reaches over and presses as many of the GPS buttons as possible. Causing the voice to change again. Oh, Cindy Sue, great! Come on now, you little man. You cry, baby. Turn left at a hundred kilometers and try not to get the hang there on the steering wheel. Oh, hey, okay, Gabby, make that stop. Like, I don't have enough issues already. Oh, Frank. Bob. Oh, thanks. Frank finally gets on the highway and rapidly accelerates to cruising speed. Wee! Daddy, go fast! Frightened even by the word we, quickly realizes, though, that it's the sound of joy and focuses on the road ahead. Uh, honey? I'm not speeding, dear. Honey? Don't tell me you have to go wee too. No, I'm hungry. Me too. I'm currently experiencing excessive borborigmus as well. I need to be properly hydrated and sufficiently satiated. What does that even mean? <sighs> okay, all right, all right. Okay, uh, where do you guys want to eat? Let's see. Uh, there's Sun Tu Fat's Chinese buffet. Ew, no way, Dad. That place is awful. Let's go to the Cafe Scientifique. I want Chipo Filippo's. Oh, well, okay, Chipo Filippo's it is. The Duncan family pulls over at the next highway exit with a Chipo Filippo's ready to devour some taco delicioso. <laughs> Welcome to Chipo Filippo's. Chipo Filippo's, Chipo Filippo's. Ay, 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 ay. Whatever! Oh, you're Tommy Wifat! Turning to the kids. Oh, I love Tommy Wifat. Look, Frank, it's Tommy Wifat! Tommy, man, what are you doing here? The CD. She not so good. Senor Frank, I only so two. And I think you got one, and my mother the other. Sitting down to the table, finally the family begins to order, and here comes their waiter. What can I get you this evening? Tommy, man, you wait on tables too? I told you, Senor Frank, she not so good. Focus, boys, focus. Pregnant woman over here. Mom quickly begins to order the order that would make any sane person gag. I think I'm gonna take three fish tacos with a side order of ice cream and uh, some sardines. Ew! Tommy, being completely horrified but intrigued, asks... Senorita, would you like those tacos? Extra spicy? Insanely spicy? Or the spice beyond our spice? The Terminator! Most definitely the Terminator! You know, some people theorize that spicy food causes contractions by stimulating the digestive system. While others suggest spicy food increases production of the hormone prostaglandin, which also helps move the process along while... Enough already! That's ridiculous, dear. Anyways, not due for another two weeks. Bring on the spice! After wolfing down the taco special, Mom's incredibly spicy pregnancy cravings, they head to the car with the sounds of a faint song being sadly sung in the distance. The hell I got for Christmas is to be... Gee, I really thought that song would have done better. Back in the car, Dad seems to have found his Christmas zone of peace and goodwill to his children. From the back of the car comes a plea. Dad, can you please put on some effervescent and boisterous music? For I believe I may fulminate, I explode, if I cannot express my joyful inner cheeriness. Yes, Daddy, I'm Lipernum and Ignoramus music. Gabby, whose child are you anyway? Frank. Sure, Gabby. Giving into the pleas for his children, Frank reaches down and turns on the radio and hears... What does the fox say? Yay! It's the song that's on every parent's mind. The song that has swept the country by storm. The song that... Doesn't make any sense. Okay, mark my words. That guy's going to be working with Tommy at Chipo Filippo's next year. Now, Dad, you are exhibiting extreme and excessive symptoms of misomniasm. Miso what? Is that even English? Seriously, Dad, misomniasm is a hatred or dislike of what is new or represents change, and you have a serious case of it. Yeah, a serial case of it. <laughs> <laughs> no way, no how. It took me three days to get that song out of my head the last time we played it. Not one word, I tell you. Not one word. Daddy. Cindy Sue, don't Daddy. you? Daddy. Cindy Sue. What does the fuck? Oh! <laughs> Come on, honey, it's fun. To Dad's horror and amazement, Mom begins to do the unthinkable, the undoable, the never-to-be-undoneable. She turns on the radio and begins to fulminate loudly. What, what does the fox say? Come on. Well, according to Animal Monthly, all foxes are higher pitched than dog vocalizations, partly because foxes are much smaller. The barks are sort of a but very high-pitched, almost yippy. The screaming howl is actually.
most often heard during the breeding season. Get me! ex nay on the eat bray talk. I like foxes. Whoa, 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 whoa. By this time, the fox song is over, and the top 100 Christmas songs of all time are playing on the radio, filling the car once again with peace and tranquility of Christmas. Peace has once again arrived. Chestnuts roasting on an open fire. I love Chest peace and tranquility. And honey? Yeah, yes, dear. Uh, honey? Okay, what? No more bathroom breaks and cravings. The peace is slipping. Honey? No more food stops, no more foxes. No more, please, no more. Honey, uh, I think my water broke. Do oh! you like water? Yippee! I no, 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 this can't be happening. You're joking, right? <laughs> Does it look like I'm joking? Panic quickly replaces peace and tranquility. Gabby, quick, check the GPS and see how far it is to the nearest hospital. Um, the nearest hospital is one and a half hours away. Uh, an hour and a half? H honey, you sure you're not having Braxton Hicks? Who's Mr. Hicks? No, no, okay, <laughs> my mom's house is only 45 minutes away. We can make it there quicker. Then Frank says the unthinkable. Besides, she's delivered lots of baby pigs before. What? My baby is not being born by a pig farm and mom. They are nothing alike. Actually, mom, the anatomy of a pig and a human are very similar, both being placental mammals. Although pigs are very much alike to us, one of the major differences is the facial expression. Pigs and humans look nothing alike. Not in your grandma's case. All characters in this story are completely fictional and bear no resemblance to any live family members. Okay, come on, kids. Uh, let's sing to help pass the time. Uh, the Wi-Fi God for Christmas is too big. Hey, watch it, fella. Oh, I'm sorry, honey. No, watch it, fella. In the middle of the road. Deviate, Dad. Deviate. Deviate what? Oh, my nerves. Look out there. His what? Man, you're going boom, Daddy. Hey, look at that. They're flying in the air. It, it's okay, Cindy Sue. They appear to just be plastic ornaments. Frank has entered the Christmas zone. The Christmas parade zone! What? How did I get here? Hooray! Daddy, I got parade. In all the panic, Frank has taken the wrong turn and broken into the barriers and driving through the parade frantically, trying to get off the route. Wasn't that the shepherds and the wise men that just flew by? Apparently it's not just Santa's sleigh that can fly. Look out! Get out of the way! Don't hurt baby Jesus, he's my favorite. Turn now! Now? Now! Ah! Frank has finally found a way off the parade route and has gotten back on the highway. The stress is incredible. There is no peace and tranquility to be found. Okay, Dad, somehow you've taken a shortcut to Grandma's house and are expected to arrive in five minutes and 23 seconds. To be precise. Ah! I know, I'm pretty amazing. Not you! The baby's coming, Frank! The baby's coming! Hurry, honey, hurry! Dad puts the pedal to the metal and uses OnStar to call his mom. Mom? Mom. Howdy! Hi, Mom. We're almost there. Bernita's water's broken! Sorry, kids. That just kind of comes out of me every once in a while. Daddy, I have to pee pee. You're not peeing in here. Shoo. Who peed in the water? No one's peeing in the car, Mom. I may be getting older, son, but I will have you know. Mom, Mom. Daddy, I don't miss it. Okay, I grew up here. I won't miss it. I don't want my baby being born on a pig farm. Well, actually, Mom, as I was saying before... Gabby! Yes, your daddy faster. Okay, well, shoot, I missed the turn! You what? See, I told you. Dad, I really have to pee. Frank finally realizes that he's missed a turn to his own house, slams on the brakes just as Mom's seatbelt begins to tighten and in turn squeaks out a... Oh, excuse me. Those fish tacos must have been acting up. Oh, it's okay, honey. I turned around. We're almost there. I can see Mom running out of the house now. Yes, hon, I know the baby's coming faster. Honey? Yes, I know how you get after eating tacos. It's okay. Honey, stop the car! Frank slams on the brakes again, sliding to a screeching halt. Silence fills the car. Honey, the baby's not coming. <laughs> what do you mean the baby's not coming? Where did he go? He just, he just can't decide not to come. Apparently, I... Ate too many of those spicy fish tacos. It's all Tommy's fault. I told you so. Daddy! What, Cindy Sue? What? Daddy, I just peed. Oh. <laughs> there is a Christmas dimension. A dimension of rest. Of calm, family harmony and tranquility. That transcends the entire holiday, bringing joy and laughter and peace. This was not that dimension. Indeed, it is impossible to find such a dimension without looking into the dimension of our own hearts, which longs to be filled with hope. 
Hope for better days ahead. Hope for true Christmas, true family, and true joy. Indeed, the hope that can only be found in a love that transcends what is in this world. The hope of Jesus. Merry Christmas.